Now let me give you a little disclaimer as you're turning to Isaiah chapter 50. Isaiah chapter 50. Um, I hope you're not disappointed when I tell you this, but I just want you to know up front where we're headed, okay? I understand that there are probably some young people here tonight in this size of crowd. Um, I, I'm sure there's a few that you're here because you were forced to be here or you had no choice to be here. There's probably a few in this size of a crowd that are full of rebellion and you have no desire to live for God. I'm finding 20 years into this that that is less and less the case. Okay? And I think there's a time and a place to preach and to deal with those kind of people. But if you're here tonight and you just don't have a desire at all to live for God, um, I'm hoping that you can be touched by the word that I delivered to everybody else. Because I'm going to preach tonight to those that have a desire and those that are longing. Are there any young people here that want to go deeper? Praise God. Isaiah chapter 50 and verse number 10. Isaiah chapter 50 and verse number 10. Who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness, and hath no light. Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. Who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness? Somebody say that with me. Walketh in darkness. And hath no light. Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. I know you're standing, but I'd like to turn your attention to one more verse or one more portion of scripture found in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse number 4, the heading over this is Jeremiah's call and commission. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And then he goes on down and God begins to tell him, I've put the words in your mouth. Verse 9 says, the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. Verse 10 says, that the Lord said to him, I have this day set thee over nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. It's powerful ministry. But I want to draw your attention back to verse number five before he ever launches in to what he's going to do in Jeremiah's ministry. He said, before we ever get started in this, he, let, he said, let me explain something. I knew you before you were ever formed in the belly of your mother. And when you were in the womb, I had already sanctified thee. I have never tried to tackle a subject like this, and I don't know that I've ever heard anybody address this subject just like this. But I feel very compelled tonight to talk to you just for a few moments from this thought. Divine darkness. Divine darkness. 
There's young people in this building that are in a very special place in life. And I believe before we're finished here tonight, God's going to help you understand that. And he's going to give you the keys. Expressly, the Spirit is going to speak to you tonight as to what it takes to navigate, to wind your way through this time in life. So in the very near future, God can use you as a very powerful tool in his hand. Anybody here want to be used of God? I want to see the hands of the ones that want to be used of God here tonight. That's the ones I'm preaching to. One more time, would you lift your voice right now? Would you cry out and ask God to help you to receive the word of the Lord? Come on, right now. Come on, young people. Let's lift your voice and pray. That's all right. Come on, if you've got anticipation. If you've got anticipation. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. If you could help me. I'm, this is not responding. My ears are stopped up or something. Just help me up here if you would. When I read this verse, this portion of Scripture in the book of Isaiah, I immediately began to recognize some things. Time will not allow me to completely unpack all of this. But there were some things that caught my attention. The Bible does not contradict itself. There was prior knowledge from things I had studied in the past, and I was reading this verse, and I was trying to make it fit with previous things that I had studied and even preached. I knew from many years of studying the Word of God that basically in Scripture, basically there are three different types of darkness. Everybody knows the darkness that we are referring to when we speak of the darkness of those that have not yet come into the light of truth. And so my mind went there and I thought, well, then when you talk about that, you talk about perhaps the darkness of sin. Because the Bible says that men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. And so darkness, from this angle or this facet of darkness, is dealing with the darkness, the sin, the ways of men who have not yet come into the light. But this verse that I read to you in Isaiah 50 would not fit in that. The reason that it would not fit in that kind of darkness is because the Bible says in Isaiah 50 that this one who is in darkness and has no light is one that fears the Lord and one who obeys his voice. And so that one's out. It's not speaking of the darkness 
of men that would rather live in sin than in light. There's a second kind of darkness in Scripture. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. It's the darkness of, of ignorance. The opposite of this darkness is or would be the word of life. This is one of the most basic statements of God in the entire Scripture. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And so we would say of someone that does not know the truth as we know the truth that they are living in the ignorance of darkness. And so you've got the darkness, the evil deeds of men, the sin, that kind of darkness. Now, as I mentioned with the first kind of darkness, we've got the darkness of ignorance. And then thirdly, as apostolic people, if you read scripture, you understand that there is such a thing called spiritual warfare. And so a third kind of scriptural darkness would be the darkness of demonic power. Demonic power is oftentimes Luke 22, Acts 26, Ephesians 6, Colossians 1. These are scriptures that talk about the power of darkness or the evils of darkness. It's that satanic world that is involved with the world of darkness. All of us here tonight at one time or another have done battle. We have done war with the spirits of darkness. But none of these darknesses, whether it is the darkness of sin and choice of sin or the darkness of ignorance or the darkness of satanic, or satanic powers, rather, none of these darknesses fit with the darkness that is being spoke about in Isaiah chapter 50. Why are you taking time to tell us that? There is a reason. Stay with me. This darkness... That is being spoke of in Isaiah chapter 50 is a darkness that has come to somebody that loves God. A darkness that comes to somebody that fears God. The darkness, now I'm going to pull you into this. The darkness that comes to a young person that has a desire to be used mightily of God. It's a darkness that comes to somebody that knows what it is to lift their hands. Come on and say, I love you, Jesus. The kind of darkness that I want to preach tonight is not the darkness that ignorant people live in. It's not the darkness, come on, that sinners live in. It's not satanic darkness. It's a darkness that men and women who are mightily and powerfully used of God will walk through and must walk through at some point or some season in their life. The darkness that I want to address in some young lady's life in this place has nothing to do with sin. It has nothing to do with a lack of wisdom. And hear me loud and clear. It has nothing to do with the devil. The darkness in your life that you are facing tonight is divine darkness. God has sent this darkness not to destroy you, but to develop you into a powerful destiny <laughs> hallelujah my objective though I have a hard assignment here tonight come on is if I can keep one train wreck from happening because oftentimes divine darkness is misunderstood for satanic darkness come on oftentimes God's darkness if you will is misunderstood for sinful darkness I've seen the tragedy when darkness comes as part of the development process people the devil lies to young people and because they don't understand it nearly wipes them out I want you to hear me loud and clear before we're finished tonight the devil didn't do this this is not because God has forsaken you this is not because you've committed too many sins God has a purpose Hallelujah, hallelujah, come on. 
on. If you think we correlated, come on, these songs and my sermon tonight, you've got another thought coming. You know why they sang the things they sung? Because God had a word for you. You're not alone. This is not come to destroy you. This is part of your ministry. This is a part of your future. This is a part of you becoming who God created you to be. Hear me loud and clear. Everyone who has set their heart on serving God. Come on. Are there any young people here tonight that you're not interested in marching to the beat of the parade of predictability? Come on. Are there any weirdos in the crowd? I want to know, are there any young men and young ladies who will abashedly, unabashedly jump to your feet and say, I want God to talk to me. I want to see the blinded eyes open. I want to... Hallelujah. I want to know, are there any young men that say, I'm not being flippant. I'm not being disrespectful. I'm not being unbelieving. But I want my own stories. I want to see the deaf ears unplugged. I want to see the blinded eyes open. I want to see... I can't hear you yet. I don't want to just hear about hundred soul revivals. I want to have a hundred soul revival. I... Everyone who has ever set their heart on doing something powerful for God will face this divine darkness at one time or another. God has sent me here to be a clarion, a voice of clarity. Come on, to clear up the murky water for a lucidness, an anointing to come, to create a lucidness where you leave here tonight and say, oh, that's what you're doing. The first thing that I want to address is this, the darkness that you are facing tonight is not indicative that you are defeated. You didn't hear what I just said. The darkness that you are facing tonight and we're gonna talk a little bit more about it. I believe God's gonna help me articulate where you're living. Not darkness that sin causes, not darkness, ignorant darkness, not satanic darkness, but the darkness, come on, where you are, where you are unclear. There's a darkness that you are facing. I'm preaching to some of you right now. Your brains have been scrambled. There is a sense of uncertainty. Come on, you're not struggling because you want to go the way of the world. Come on, you're trying to find your way. Divine, listen to me, divine darkness is not indicative that you are not cut out to be used of God. My God, I feel my help right now. Divine darkness is not indicative that you are not qualified to do great things for God. Notice this kind of darkness. He said, it's the one that feared God and the one that trusted God. I want to tell somebody, you're doing better than what you think you're doing you're doing better than what the devil wants you to think you're doing hallelujah come on God sent me here come on as an answer to a mother's prayer God touched my son tonight I want to tell that mother's son right now you're doing better than what the devil wants you to believe that you're doing you've got what it takes there's a soul winner in you there's a preacher in you there's a missionary in you my God there's anointing in you This 
this divine darkness. He does not just entrust with anyone. It's not for the cheap, the shallow, the once in a while. He does not entrust divine darkness with just the weekend warriors. See, this high-tech society that we live in, we live in a society, we want, we want everything right now. We want to push a button and for it to happen. We want instant gratification. That's not the way operating, moving, and being used in the depths of the spirit works. You can't push a button, come on, and be used of God the way you want to be used of God overnight. (laughs) Hallelujah. The old saints, come on, come on, the old saints would tell you. And the old man, come on, in this young body wants to tell you tonight that the essential element in the development of depth, come on, in a spiritual life, you cannot avoid walking through divine darkness. You can't avoid it. Something that comes from the hand of God. You say, well, break it down for me. All right, I jotted a few things down to define what you might feel, see, or think when you are in the depths of divine darkness. You wake up one day And you can't feel anymore. Can I get real tonight? I want to know, is there anybody in this place that you, something's happened to you personally? You don't have to raise your hands. I just need you to acknowledge it in your mind and spirit right now. You don't really, you couldn't take me back. You, you really couldn't give me a date. You don't really, you don't really even know how to explain it, but you just, you just woke up one day and you, you lost your feeling. You love God. I said, we're going, we're going, we're going to plumb deep tonight. Put on your spiritual scuba, scuba gear. We're going deep tonight. You love God. You haven't stopped praying completely. Your prayer life has waned and suffered terribly because who wants to pray when it seems like nothing's happening? This is not for the rebellious one in the youth group. I'm talking about a divine darkness. One that feared God, according to Isaiah. One that feared God. And one that walked with God. And one that trusted God. You pick your Bible up. And you read it, but you don't understand. You pray for revelation. But you battle boredom. You're real. I'm not preaching. I told you. I'm not dealing with those here tonight that are liars and full of duplicity. I'm talking about you that are truthful. It's black and white with you. And the frustration has gotten worse because you keep going back and you keep looking at your heart only to find you can't find anything. God, if it's somebody I need to forgive, I'll forgive them. Show me who it is. But there's nobody to forgive. 
You search your heart. The preacher preaches about the essentiality of brokenness. And you try to be broken. You used to could be broken. You used to could cry. But now the tears, the tears no longer come easily. In fact, you, you, can't, you, you can think about the saddest thing imaginable. And you still can't manage to squeeze a tear. You rebuke the devil. And nothing happens. I will with courage and fortitude drive forward because I understand there may be an Apostle Paul in this place tonight that 10 or 15 years from now, come on, I may never hear about it, but I believe there's some people in this place that are walking through divine darkness tonight that somewhere down the road you're going to turn your world upside down, but you're going to be able to look back at that Friday night service and say, I didn't know who that preacher was, but he brought me some understanding. You ask others to pray for you. Come on. You ask others to pray for you and nothing happens. You're more frustrated. Come on, because you love God. You want to be used of God. You want to do what's right. But you're more frustrated because you look across the aisle and sister so-and-so cries easily. Come on, and brother so-and-so seems to be feeling something. But you sit there with a love for God in your heart and you wonder, what is wrong with me? You go listen to your favorite preachers, but it doesn't do to you what it's done before. You go find your pra- your favorite praise and worship. Come on. You go find the songs that used to move you. Come on. They may be old ones, but you're willing to reach back five or six years ago. Songs that used to do something to you and turn over something in your spirit. And you put your headset on and you get along with God. But that doesn't even do it anymore. You've talked to your horse. No counsel seems to help. No answers are your answer. There's an unexplainable, strange sense of emptiness. There's no sign of God. You sit in services and you go through the normal motions. And the message is great. It's potent and it has great, it has great body and there's great power there. But for some reason, it just doesn't strike a chord in you anymore. God. How can you say, how can you describe it like this? Because I can tell you, I've been right where you're at. Not out of rebellion, not out of sin, not out of disobedience to my pastor. It wasn't the kind of darkness that comes with rebellion. Come on, I've walked through darkness that I now understand was divine darkness. But you hear me tonight, this place you are at in life, God only entrusts special people with it. You hear what I'm telling you, Moses had to go through it. David had to go through it. Jacob had. Come on. You forgive. You apologize to people. You just want your feeling back. You apologize to everybody you can think of. You get on your knees. Come on. And there's nothing there. You rebuke. Oh, it's the devil. I rebuke the devil. You rebuke the devil and that doesn't work. Nothing. It's divine. It's divine darkness. It's the kind of darkness that when the disciples seen the blind man. In John chapter 9, they immediately but falsely assumed it's sin. He's in this condition because of sin. And Jesus quickly let them know this has nothing to do with sin. It has everything to do with scent. He sent him 
to the pool of Siloam to wash his eyes. And the Bible says, which is interpreted sent. Jesus immediately corrected. He immediately corrected the disciples. Just like I've come to correct your enemies and your flesh in the voices in your head that tell you, I've done something somewhere. Some, I, I'm not, something my parents have done something. It's the church I'm in. It's, it's the situation. It's the job. It's the school I go to. No, 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 no. Jesus told his disciples, this has nothing to do with sin. This has to do with the glory of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. The darkness, the darkness that you are in, God is shaping. It's the same kind of darkness that there, that is there as a child in utero. Come on, that mother cannot see it, but in the darkness and in the safety of that womb, come on, there are limbs growing, there are lungs growing, there is flesh that will eventually grow over that skeletal system. Young person, you can't see it tonight, but the darkness you're in, Something's growing in you. Something's being developed in you. God is shaping something supernatural. Hallelujah. I cannot emphasize it strong enough. Come on. This is about you being sent. God is not angry at you. You say, Brother Marks, I have no clue what you're talking about. I'm telling you, somebody sitting around you. Come on. This is like a cool drink of water because they came to this meeting feeling like God's left me. He's forsaken me. I'm telling you, he has not. His hand is in this. His spirit is in this. His purpose is in this. You are sent. You are sanctified. You are ordained. You have a divine purpose. Jeremiah, I knew you before you ever got to darkness. Jeremiah, I sanctified, I sanctified you in your mother's womb. You were sanctified. In that darkness, I already had my hand on you. In the darkness, in the darkness, the great patriarch Jacob, who had dealt with his own name and his own reputation and his own and his own flesh that was trying to destroy his purpose. It was in darkness. Are you hearing me? It was in darkness that Jacob became Israel. It was in darkness that he wrestled with a divine being and something shifted in him. Come on, I'm preaching to you right now. Come on, it was in darkness. It was in the darkness of a fish. Come on, that Jonah, the propensity. You say he was in the belly of a whale. No, no, he was in darkness because God was making a prophet out of him. Come on, I'm telling you, he's taking the running out of you. He's taking the propensity to stray. The darkness will take that out of you. It's a scary feeling. And you're there. If you'll be honest. It's the grip of divine darkness. It's one thing when you don't feel like you can help yourself. It's another thing. It takes the trepidation and the fear of darkness. It takes it to a whole nother level 
when it doesn't feel like anybody else can help you either. The dark times that shaped me, the things that God allowed that I, some things that I'm not even comfortable publicly talking about. But when they came, I labeled them a curse. When they came, I said, there's no way, there's no way God, this God is anywhere. There's no way God had anything to do with this. And God had his hand in it the whole time. And some of you are exactly where I've been and exactly just like Brother Lance and others that have been used mightily of God. It's one thing. The thing that scared me worse about the divine darkness that I walked through at your age that shaped me into the man that I am today was not when I got to the place that I couldn't help myself. But the scary part was when I got to a place where I felt like nobody else could help me either. I remember thinking if I could just get to that meeting and brother so-and-so could lay his hands on me. Y'all going to leave me out on that skinny limb by myself, aren't you? I guarantee you I ain't the only one that squinted my eyes. I didn't have my eyes closed. I was praying with such desperation that I just would hope that somebody on the platform would see that I was struggling and come put their hands on me. And all of a sudden, through my squinted eyes, praying and hoping that God would send somebody, somebody would come and they would pray. And when times passed, I had felt something. But walking and groping through this divine darkness sent by God, come on, it's one thing to not be able to help myself, but it was the frustration of after they prayed for me, I still felt alone. And then if you're really honest and then you're really true and you can't find out what's wrong, then you start worrying about am I, am I, am I deceived? What's wrong with me? This divine darkness came to every man, major man or woman in Scripture who was mightily used of God. Abraham, Moses, Job. David is pinned the same. God, why have you forsaken me? All the flood of the waves and the billows of God seemed to go over him and he cried out in agony and anger to God whom he knew as his rock. Why have you forgotten me? Why have you cast us off forever? This divine darkness came to prophets and they wept. It came to godly kings and they humbled themselves. Even Jesus dealt with darkness. If you set out to do great exploits for God, there's a divine darkness that will come to you. You will not be exempt. You cannot escape it. You hear this preacher tonight. It is an essential factor. And being deeply anointed. I don't have time to deal with these individually. So I'll briefly mention them. As I'm hurrying to a close. The darkness. If you don't have understanding. And that's why God would send a preacher to preach something like this in a youth meeting. Maybe some of you are still going kind of. Don't think after 20 years, I don't know how to turn the crank. Don't, don't think, I don't know. I know what protocol is. And there's a time to shout. And we may end up doing that before this is over here tonight. But some of you, it would be, doing, it would, it would be more damning to you than helping if we just came in here and went through the motions of a service and hyped you up and you went right back out. With still no understanding. The darkness, the divine darkness that you're not aware of, if you don't have understanding of what's going on, it will try to challenge your calling, your consecration, your conversion, your commitment. You say, Brother Marks, well, what did I do? That's me, that's where I'm at. 
Well, you can't change your mind. You've already asked God to use you. And this is his sovereign process of shaping something supernatural into your life. The key lies in the text that I read to you. It's just simple. But lean in. There's a key here in the text. It's a darkness. Where there is no light. That comes to one who fears the Lord and one who obeys the voice of his servant. But the key in surviving and dealing with this divine darkness is what Isaiah says about the one who is in darkness. He said, he who walks in darkness. It may sound too soft moors for you. It's not tongue in cheek when I'm telling you what I'm telling you. This is the key. There is, no, there is no super formula. I didn't come here tonight to tell you something you've never heard before. I want to tell you how to deal with divine darkness. You keep walking. Because, listen to me. That's where young people make a mistake. The same prayer life that brought you to this place. You were pushing, if you'll think. You were pushing. You were turning the plate over. You were seeking God. You were on fire. And then all of a sudden you hit a wall. The worst mistake you'll ever make when you hit a wall as you are pursuing excellence. Come on, and greatness from God is to quit walking. Go back to praying the way you were praying. If you were fasting once a week and you hit a wall... Thank you back here. Come on, I don't know where the rest. I'm preaching to some people in here. You keep walking. You don't go to church and stick your hands in your pocket. Well, I feel... I feel awkward. I feel uncomfortable. Some of you are not. If you are not careful, you're not going to get this tonight. Come on. Well, if this was in my home church and there were all these strangers here, that preacher's talking to me, but I'm worried about my image. I'm worried about a girl over here or a guy over here. I'm preaching to a young lady right now. You need to forget what you look like. God's sending you a rhema word right now, and you need to open your mouth. You need to open your spirit and receive this. I tell you what you do, you get up and pray in the morning. Come on. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I tell you what you do on Sunday, you go teach your Sunday school. Don't you give up your Sunday school class. Come on. I don't care how backslid you feel. Don't you give up your Sunday school class. Don't you get out of the choir. Don't you... Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, God's trying to help you understand that you are not buried like the precious seed you are planted. But the difference between being buried and planted is the expectation of the one that put the seed in the ground. I'm telling you, God sent you an evangelist with great expectation. Hallelujah. There's life in the soil. There's life in that dark, cold place. I see something. There's divine metamorphosis. Something's breaking. Something's about to sprout up. Something's about. I'm going to give you 60 seconds before I go forward. But I want you right now for the next 60 seconds to worship God uninhibited. Worship him like you worshiped him. Come on, I can go. Come on, lift your voice. Raise your hands. Come on. Brother Marks. I feel, I feel covered up. Do you know, listen to me, lean in. There are more organisms 
in a tablespoon of soil. There are more organisms in one tablespoon of soil than there are people on earth. You didn't hear what I'm going to say it again. There are more organisms in a spoonful of soil than there are people on earth. Don't pay attention to them. You look right here. You're in a dark, dank, cold place. But there's life in the soil. And let me remind you of what the psalmist said. He who is planted in the house of God. There's, there's richness. There's life. See, the devil wants you to believe that death is in darkness. But death's not in we have no, Without soil, we have nothing. It's just dirt. No, it's not just dirt. He who is planted in the house of God. The key to dealing with this divine darkness. Is you keep doing what you know is right. Even when you can't do it out of feeling anymore. This may be too radical. I don't think it is. I don't think this is wildfire. I don't think what I'm fixing to tell you is out of balance. Something dawned on me the other day, Brother Lance, and I said, uh-uh. No, nope, I'm fixing to, I'm going to hit that, and I'm going to start in Jackson. I wish somebody, I wish somebody had said that to me growing up. How many is here? How many is in this building right now? And I don't want you to be ashamed. But you're not certain that you've ever heard. I'm not talking about an audible. When I say that God spoke to me, I only know of two, maybe three times in my life it was audible. But God talks to me all the time and it's an impression. You know, he wants to talk to you. I said, do you know he wants to talk to you? How many? I, I'm this, this is going to take courage. Say, I'd love for God to talk to me. But I am not absolutely certain that I have ever. Don't raise your hands. If, if you don't want God to talk to you, I'm not, don't raise your hand. But if you're here and you say, I'm not certain. But I desperately want God. I want to know. Where, what, the direction of the church? My God. We're preaching this and we're preaching this and we're, everything, you know. We No, my God, the direction of the church. We're worried about Hollywood. Dear God, Hollywood's the least of our concerns. If we can't hear from God. And I submit to you that a lot of the problems that we spend all of our time trying to treat symptoms, come on, if you follow the pathology of the problem, it's because nobody's hearing from God. Because if God's talking to you, you don't need somebody to preach against that. You know where I learned? You know where I learned to hear from him? In darkness. But let me tell you something about your lineage, your spiritual roots. (laughs) God thundered down that mountain. Between God and those people where it was a dark cloud though. And that initial call, Brother Lance, he wanted all of Israel to come up there because he wanted to talk to all of them. And Moses said, did you hear that? And 
And Israel said, yeah, we heard that, but that's, that dark cloud, that, that sound, that God forbid we have a generation that's willing to put all the hearing from God on the ministry. You know why more people aren't hearing from God? Because God speaks. You learn to hear the voice of God after you've worked your way through the divine darkness. You know why people can't hear from God? People can't hear from God because they're not willing to trust. They're not willing to keep walking when God sends dark. It's in the darkness that I learned his voice. Can I, can I exhort you with all of the passion I've got in me? You know what I feel? I'm preaching to you like, like I want somebody to preach to my, my young boys when they get 16 and 17 and they're struggling. For your soul's sake, when you are in darkness, don't turn. Don't turn to your atheist professors. Don't get on YouTube and start watching debates. Don't. Secularism, politics, come on, don't get on YouTube and start listening to what atheists and agnostics are saying. Come on, that darkness was sent by God to drive you to your knees and say, okay, God, I want to know you. Talk to me. Where are you at? What are you doing? My biggest concern, and yeah, we've got issues. My biggest concern is your daddy, that generation dying off that knew what it was to hear from God. Nobody knows what the voice of God sounds like anymore. I know you're in a dark place right now. But don't get on social media and start hooking up with backsliders. He said, the one that feared me and the one that obeyed my voice who walked in darkness. Come on, he gave the keys. Keep trusting. Keep relying. Lean on him. Don't lean on your backslidden family members. Don't move off with your dad because your dad's going to let you do whatever you want to. Don't start experimenting. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? I'm telling somebody right now, and I hope this is not too plain. But the, the darkness you're in right now is a divine darkness. And if you let the devil, he will tell you it's gender confusion. You want me to preach G-rated in an X-rated society? You're crazy. You've lost your mind. These kids don't even get that. They want to be told the truth. Well, I just don't know. I just don't... You want to, the devil wants you to make this something else. Well, maybe I'm homosexual or maybe I'm lesbian. Come on, come on, let me hear what I'm telling you, right? Or so you, you, if something is conjured up from your past and, and I'm not, I'm not being little, be little and you being molested. But let me tell you something right now. God can use those kind of things. That doesn't mean you have to spend the rest of your life being confused. God wants you to have a certainty. Come on, come on. He has sanctified me. He has his hand on me. He's going to use me. He's got a purpose for my life. (laughs) 
except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. It bideth alone. Oh my God. But if it dies, it bringeth forth great fruit. I close with this. John Kevin O was a professor, I believe, of psychology at the University of St. Louis. A very riveting, powerful, moving story. It was late in his life. He was a, a faith-believing man, but late in his life, just things compile. Things amass, and it's just more stuff. It's, it's life. He said, I was left rock my life late in life. My sunset years rocked, reeling. And he said, I just woke up one morning and thought the answer to all of this is I know people that know people. And so before he has really even thought it through completely, just on a whim, he buys a ticket to Calcutta. People he knew was able to connect him with people that was connected to Mother Teresa, and he actually gets a meeting with her. And he gets to Calcutta and he gets off the plane, and there's this woman of great reputation, and there's the just the cordial comments and sentiments, and nice to meet you. And finally, after the crowd kind of dissipates and moves away, she says, What is it that brings you here? She said, how can I help you? And he said, the reason I'm here, he said, is I, I flew here for you to pray for me that God would give me clarity. And the story goes that Mother Teresa, right in his face, threw her head back and began to laugh. And he's standing there and he's thinking, great, I already thought I was doomed. Now I'm sure she's going to snuff what little bit of life I had right out of me. And he said, as I stood there and watched her laugh, thinking, how could this woman laugh in my face? She said, clarity. She finally stopped laughing and she said, clarity. He said, well, what? He said, you're a woman of great faith. You must, you must have clarity. She says, Mr. Kevin, oh, I've never had clarity a day in my life. She said, in fact, clarity usually is the last thing you have to let go of. And she said, Mr. Kevin, oh, while I will not pray that God gives you clarity, he said, she said, I'm going to pray for you that God would help you trust. It's not answers you need tonight. It's in the presence of uncertainty. As much as I'd like to tell you I'm thankful for a heritage, I'm thankful you got a heritage, I'm thankful for my heritage, but that's no guarantee, that's no guarantee of perpetuity or the continuity of, I don't care how many generations you've been in this. That's no guarantee that there's going to be fifth generation or sixth generation. Heritage is not enough. Somewhere, somewhere you're, Somewhere it's got to be, it's got to become something that's shaped in you. I, if this is not what you guys wanted, I apologize. This, I'm just got to do what I feel like the Holy Ghost called me to do. Man, have me back. We'll, we'll thump and shout. And I, but I like to scream and holler with the best of them. I'm telling you, you don't realize. Some of you just got your head in the clouds. You don't realize how important a service this is for somebody. Because there's somebody already. I felt you breathe a sigh of relief because you came into this building thinking you were on your way down. You thought this was going to be your destruction. And God's saying, this is not about destruction. This is about your destiny. This is not about death. This is about life.
And when this thing delivers you and spits you on the shore, you're going to walk the streets. You're going to walk the streets of Nineveh with a boldness. But it was darkness that developed that. It was darkness. Divine darkness. Darkness sent by God. If these ushers would help me, I'd like to move a couple of rows of these chairs. Listen to me as I give you instruction. Let's move a couple of rows of these chairs. Now listen to me. You okay with this? Okay. Listen, when I make this appeal, you guys up here on this platform, listen to me. If this is for you tonight, I don't care what it does to the song. I don't care if it takes your part out of it. I don't care if it doesn't give us a beat. I don't care if we ain't got a keyboard. Do not stand there with something in your hand I feel like you've got a responsibility to fulfill tonight. You hear me? I've been back there. I, I know what it is to sit in there. Back up. Okay, here's what I want. I'm not saying the rest of your backslid when I, when I make this appeal. It's not what I'm saying. But I want you, I'm going to find out which ones are real or for real, Okay. If you knew that the waters were stirred tonight, if you knew they were stirred, for 25 young men and 25 young ladies, now I think they're stirred for everybody, but I'm giving you something. If you knew God was going to touch 25 young men and 25 young ladies that are dealing with divine darkness, I want to find out who's for real. This this is not for the faint of heart tonight. This is not for the ones that are just interested in warming a pew. How quick would you get down here? Now, I'm not saying only 25 of, of, of 25 young ladies and 25. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if you knew that's all that God was going to take tonight, I don't think you'd kind of yawn and just walk cool. Some of you know desperately. You know how desperate this is. You know how on time this is. I know how on time this is because God was insistent. I've never preached this before. I may never preach it again. God had a word for somebody here tonight in Jackson, Tennessee. This is not death. This is destiny. This darkness is not your downfall. It's your destiny. If you're here tonight and you're one of those and you knew how quick would you move? You you say, this is me. This is where I'm at. You hit the nail on the head. I want you to move right now from wherever you're standing. And I want you to move like like you knew God was only going to take the first 25. Come on, where you at? Come on, move like that right now. When you get up here, we're, we're going to do something different. But when you get up here, you move like that right now. Wherever you're at. My God, if you've got to move somebody out of the way. If you're on this platform. If you're at the back of this building. If you're in the sound booth. If you're out in the foyer. Listen to me. How many believe something's about to hit this building? You feel it? You can't see it, but somewhere out in the atmosphere, something's whirling, and it's on its way to this building right now, and it's about, listen, here's what I want you to do. Here's what we're going to do. How many down here desperately want to be used of God? Come on, look, come on, desperately. I, I don't, 
I don't want to play games. You guys get ready. Listen, look at me. Some of you fixing to feel something you've never felt before in your life. You hear me? Some of you, some of you are going to get up off the floor. Something's going to hit you. And when you get up off the floor tonight, you're going to walk out of here and you're going to go back into your local church. And God's going to use you in intercessory prayer. Some, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. We got to get out of here. And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Intercessory prayer is going to hit some of you guys tonight. Because it's a dying voice in Pentecost. Come on. But some, it's going to hit. And it's not just for young ladies. Some of you young men, God's going to give you an authority to pray back spirits that are tormenting your pastor. Listen, listen, listen. Are you ready? So here's what I'm going to do. This is, not a, this is not a praise. This is not a, this is not a shout in the sense of celebration. But I'm going to count to three. And when I get to three... I want you to cry out just like I want you to think of blind Bartimaeus when he when he knew that a moment was passing by him listen but I want I want to help you with how you I want you to cry out but you cry according to how deep you want to go if you want just if you just want to go this deep you just give that kind of cry if you want to go really 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 deep you you indicate it by the volume and the shout some of you fixing to feel something you never felt before in your life there's a divine impartation there's an anointing are you ready are you ready here we go one two three go 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 pastors help me you pastors help me go 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 don't stop don't stop. Pastors, wives, help me. Youth leaders, help me. If you can get your hands on these kids, pray for them. Anointing. Ministry. Apostolic ministry. Apostolic authority. Miracles and signs and wonders. Go. That's it, honey. Go. Yeah. Yeah! Go, 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 go. Yes, 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 yes. Connect. Go. Don't stop. Don't stop. Come on, do it again. Do it again. Something's breaking. Something's breaking. Something's exploding. Something's being born. Something is being birthed in this place. Hey! Yeah, 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 Go, 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 go. He goes to hot, ha, ha. He had a 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 Open your mouth and talk in tongues. Open your mouth and talk in tongues. Open your mouth and talk in tongues. Go, go, go. Just your voices go help them come on talk in tongues talk in tongues if it's been three months talk in tongues if it's been three weeks Talk in tongues. If it's been three days, it's time to talk in tongues. 
Come on. Come on. Let's plug in. We're fixing to have an old fashioned prayer meeting in here. Yeah. God sent it. God allowed it. God is trying to shape something in you. God is trying to form something in you. Pray with another young person. It's divine darkness. I'm not lost. I'm sanctified. I'm not lost. I'm not in trouble. I'm on my way to ministry. I'm on my way to an anointing. Come on, don't stop. Don't stop. Hook up with another young lady. Hook up with another young man. Pray. Pray. Talk in tongues. Talk in tongues. I'm going to tell some of you adults something. This is applicable. You better receive it. The darkness is not in vain. Something is shaping up. There's a baby about to be born. Something is being born. Skin is forming. Skeleton is forming. Come on. It's in the womb. It's dark. But something's moving. Something's alive. Something's happening. Come on, turn and pray with somebody. Hook up right now. Come on, all the way to the back of the building. Hook up with somebody in the sound booth. Come on, pray from wall to wall, from center to circumference. Open your mouth and talk in tongues. Open your mouth and talk in tongues. This is in defense of the last day revival come on it's in you it's in you this last day revival it's in you the glory of the latter house it's in you miracle signs and wonders it's in you the church's greatest days it's in you people getting up out of wheelchairs it's in you I want every young man who feels your call to the ministry that has been affirmed by your pastor I want you to join me up on this platform every young man it's been affirmed by your pastor you feel a call to the ministry come up here keep praying keep praying don't stop Come on, hook up. If you want to pray in groups of three, four, five, I don't care. Everybody pray. Come on, you guys. Come on. Come on, keep praying. Come on, keep praying. lying across here and link up come on y'all link up across the front of this building come on God touch this next generation touch this next generation touch this next generation come on keep praying touch this next generation come on with apostolic power apostolic consecration apostolic come on guys come on lead us lead us let there be a special touch we don't need charlatans we don't need hirelings we don't need playboys we don't need little preachers we need holy ghost fire we need elijah's we need elisha's we need men that know how to call down fire come on come on 
Come on. Hatayoro bohosa kataya ha ha. Come on. He kataya rama ha. He sete ye ya ya ha ha. He kaya no toya ha. He ya ha ha toho. Ayata ya no toya. They knew that they had been with Jesus. They knew that they had been with Jesus. They knew that they had been with Jesus. Power. I want power. I want power. I don't need limelight. I want power. I don't need a name. I want power and anointing and favor. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want God to use you? How bad do you want God's hand? Come on, do it again. Come on, up these aisles. Up these aisles. Holy Ghost, take over this service. Holy Ghost, saturate us. Spirit of God. Come on, young men. Come on, young men. Come on, young men. Come on. 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 Get your education. Come on. But we, it's not education we need. Come on. It's not enticing words of men's wisdom. We need power and demonstration. We need power and demonstration. Here's what I want you to do. Gravitate. Gravitate to groups. I'm going to tell you, nobody's talked to me. Brother Lance, we had lunch. We didn't talk about this. Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you what I know in the Holy Ghost. I'm not a political guru. I'm not on social media. There's no way I know anything like that. But some of you come from churches. You're a representation you're going to go home to churches that are broken, pastors that are frustrated. You hear, I feel it in my spirit. And your pastor's praying for an answer. And the answer's right here in the MOVE conference right tonight. It's you catching fire. All hell's breaking out in some churches. You hear me? Some of you young people, it's your family that's in the middle of that hell that's breaking out. But God wants to put something on you tonight. When you walk back in there come Sunday. Come on. It's like an ignition. God wants to use you as a Holy Ghost ignition. Come on. Come on. Get in some groups. You young ladies. It doesn't matter if you're from the same church. Get in some groups. You young guys. Get in some groups. Come on. Pray. Pray like the house is on fire. Come on. Get your voice back up. Pray. Come on. Pray. Let's pray. Come on. We need God to intervene. We need God to intervene. All hell's breaking loose. We need young people to catch fire. Come on, pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your city. Pray for your pastor's wife. Pray for your youth leader. Pray for your music department. The devil wants to destroy. The devil wants to tear apart. The devil wants to divide. The devil wants to take a witness out of that city. Come on, pray like you mean it. Pray like you've got authority. Pray like God hears you when you pray. That's it. It's catching over here in the aisle. That's it. Come on. God's going to give us victory this weekend. God's going to help us win some battles this weekend.
Ah, look out, devil. In this darkness, God's raising up. He's raising up a generation that's going to make an impact on their world. Out of this darkness, there's going to be something born. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on, young ladies. Let's pray. Come on, pray like you mean it. Pray like you're a king's kid. Pray like you got the Holy Ghost. This is the point we usually stop. Let's do it again. Come on, let's push back a little bit in prayer. Come on, we're not giving up. Come on, we're going to walk right through this darkness. We're going to trust. We're going to pray. We're going to worship. We're going to war. We're going to be loyal. We're going to be faithful. We're going to be righteous. you better know how to pray in the spirit come on you better know how to close your eyes and pray in the spirit come on you better know how to open your mouth and pray in tongues ha ha God didn't give you the Holy Ghost 15 years ago for you to stop talking in tongues come on it's time to talk in tongues it's time to talk in tongues
Come on, that ought to be our prayer. More love, more power. Come on, lift your hands. More love, more power, more of you in my life. Come on, is that your prayer? More love.